If we look at 1910-147, uh, we see that lockout is required for servicing and maintenance of equipment. Um, and why is that required? Uh, because at the end of the day, we wanna make sure our people go home the same way they came in. If we're not controlling that hazardous energy associated with a piece of equipment, we are opening ourselves up to a hazard. OSHA has a regulatory requirement known as the lockout tagout standard. It, this is the lockout tagout of hazardous energy to isolate energy from what would potentially expose employees to, to hazards um, when a equipment moves or, or direct exposure to that energy if it's electrical energy or gravitational energy. It has a lot of different names. Um, OSHA is gonna refer to it as a control of hazardous energy. Uh, you're gonna find it at 1910.147 in the standard. You've heard me call it lockout. You've heard me call it control of hazardous energy. Uh, you may hear it called lockout tagout. You may hear it called lotto. Uh, this standard is found in 1910.147 and that standard describes all of the requirements for developing procedures, for isolating power, for which equipment is applicable to require a procedural development. Um, it also includes requirements on development of a program, review of that program, uh, annual verification that the people who follow the procedures do know how the procedures work and execute them properly. Um, it also requires review of the procedures themselves to ensure that, that that procedure is accurate to the equipment and that there haven't been operational or configuration changes to that equipment over the previous year. Anytime we're gonna be doing maintenance or repair on a piece of equipment or an employee uh, or a team member is gonna be exposed to that hazard of the equipment we've got to have lockout in place. All these requirements are basically for the purpose of managing the presence of hazardous energy in such a way that it doesn't get accidentally released into a situation where it could harm a person. So we're talking about thermal energy, electrical energy, chemical energy, gravitational energy. Uh, some of the, the electrical energy is often converted to you know, hydraulic energy or pneumatic energy. Um, these are things that have to be controlled within an environment uh, where people interact with powerful things. And this is an incredibly important standard for OSHA just by the, the, the sheer quantity of people who are injured from these kinds of scenarios every year. Here at Caramita, we cover all aspects of the 1910-147 standard. Program development, machine-specific procedure, writing or implementation, as well as training. Caramita is well positioned to be able to help you with a project like this. We've got multiple different people um, with the anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 to even 30 plus years of experience dealing with lockout. When it comes to a, a lockout project, whether it be small or whether it be very large in scale, you know, we, we can tailor to what you need. What we want to do is approach a client from a perspective of understanding. We want to develop an understanding of what's happening in your facility, what you do, what your equipment is, um, and then go to the, to the source of that energy and trace it all the way back to have a properly engineered uh, procedure. What we try to do is develop programs that are very site specific, uh, procedures that are very machine specific, and uh, hand them over to you in a way that you can effectively and efficiently manage it going forward. If this sounds like something that you need to do a little bit deeper dive into and get a better grasp of what's going on at your facility, please reach out to either myself or any of my Karameda colleagues. Uh, we would be happy to help you look at your lockout program. Are you meeting the requirements? Are you not? What are the things that we need to put in place and then come up with a project to get those implemented for you?